It's getting cold outside. It's minus one degree Celsius. The winter is unfortunately already here. It's getting dark, it's getting cold, it's getting snowy. Not my cup of tea, but there's nothing to do about that. This is the Tesla Model Y Performance. And this video is about showing you the importance of preheating. How important is it to preheat or precondition the battery pack before supercharging or fast charging your electric vehicle? Today, I'm gonna take this car to a supercharger V3 version and charge it with a preheated battery pack. It's a 40 minutes drive. So I'm gonna preheat the car all the way to the charger. After that, one week later, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the exact same car, the same weather conditions, and the exact same charger, but without preheating the battery pack, charging it from 10 to 80% and compare the actual charge curve, charge time, and the final results to present you what the difference actually is and the importance of preheating and the function of preheating. I mean, there's a lot of cars out there that doesn't have the functionality of a real preheating, like the ID3 I have here just beside this car doesn't have the ability to preheat the battery pack. Really bad. That means that the charge curve during winter time is worthless. Not with this car though. So let's start. Welcome to It's Only Electric. This is the channel where we only review and test things regarding fully electric cars. Let's go. So now I'm on my way to the charger. I have 25 minutes left before I reach the destination. The car is now pre-conditioning since the start of the journey. And good information to, to know and to understand is that you need to double check that the precondition is inactive, but you need to double check that your preconditioning is active. And Tesla does that by default in its navigation system. So if you enter a supercharger or a fast charger as a destination, it will per default activate the preconditioning of the battery pack. And if you don't want to preheat the battery, you just press that icon or symbol on top of the navigation to exit or deactivate the preconditioning. So now I'm actually preconditioning and the battery pack will be warm at arrival. And the car now states that I will arrive with 9% state of charge. Let's see about that. Okay, so let's connect it to the V3 supercharger and see how well this goes. I have 10% state of charge. Let's try and see how this goes. So as you see, 10% just went up to 11%. Let's see if we can get any nice speed here. Yep. So now it's happening, 234 kilowatts. 240. This is exciting. So as you see, the battery pack is really hot and has the optimal temperatures for fast charge times. So just finalized the charge session with a preheated battery pack. So the total time seems to be around 34 minutes. That's a bit above the best possible speed. Should be able to charge 10 to 80% in 27 minutes. And that's not every time I'm achieving that time. Just let me be clear about that. After this, I'm going to drain the car and in a couple of days, I'm going to do the exact same test, but without preheating the battery. The exact same charger, the same car, the same outside temperature to be able to create as comparable results as possible. And let's see how much the preheating actually affects the charging time. Yeah, so it's time for the second charge session. The co car is totally cold, has been standing outside for two days now. And as you see, I need to remove the snow on the car. It's illegal to drive with the snow on top of the car because it can cause damage to other cars and also destroy their view on the road. So this is important. Approximately the same weather conditions as the last time. Today it's four degrees minus, so two degrees colder. I don't think that will matter. So we're gonna drive it to the charger. It's approximately 30 minutes as the last time. I'm gonna utilize the exact same charger as I did then. Charge it from 10 to 
and calculate the difference. I'm also gonna note down the top speed, the total charge time, and infographics for the charge curve and compare both charge curves and see the difference. So closing into the charge station, the supercharger, the battery, and the car is still not hot. Still have, let's see, some kind of limited region, like 80% of full region and 70% when it comes to the full power output. So still missing uh, some power. That means that the battery pack still isn't uh, warmed up yet. Uh, and that's after almost half an hour of driving. So it will probably stay that way since I'm not using the preheat and uh, maybe experience slower charging curves. It's time to plug the car in, let's go. Okay, so now we are plugged in. Let's see about the speed. 88 kilowatts, 90 kilowatts, uh, 91, 95. So it's fairly quick ramping up, 107, 112. Hmm. This is uh, quick, 126. 131, so it's still going up, increasing. 135 kilowatts. That's the quickest speed I have seen so far. Just went back to 130. It says, let's see, 80%, uh, 40 minutes remaining, 127. So it's time to unplug, it just hit 80%. Oh, it's cold outside. Come on, done. Let's see. Total charge time, 42 minutes. Whew. And very cold outside. Okay, so let's look at the results and the actual differences between charging the car cold without preheating and charging it preheated. And what I wanted to do with this test was to show you a scenario that's more or less a everyday scenario. So I could have brought the car directly to the supercharger, ice cold, but that's not usually how you do it because most often you are on a road trip and you're traveling to the supercharger towards the supercharger and you will at least travel for half an hour before supercharging so let's dissect the numbers a little bit and here's the first charge curve charging hot and as you see the peak charge power in low state of charge was 235 almost 240 kilowatts and it's a lot quicker than the cold charge curve up to 40 percent then the charge curves looks almost exactly the same because at that point the tapering has begun and it's fairly aggressive on the tesla model y the battery pack is actually hot enough at that point to be able to keep up with the preheated battery pack so the thing you lose is the first speed the top speeds is just cut away and you get a lot flatter charge curve without preheating the battery pack. So the key takeaway, always preheat your battery pack. And even earlier than that, make sure to buy a car that supports preheating. I mean, there is a lot of cars out there that has preconditioning or preheating of the battery pack, but that does not include preheating the battery pack for optimizing the charge curve. That's a big difference because only preconditioning the battery pack before a trip and makes sure that the battery pack is hot enough, has the right temperature for operating normally when driving. 
And that's only to be able to get out the right amount of energy when you accelerate or regenerate energy instead of braking. But that's not the same as preconditioning for charging because the cells need a lot higher temperatures for optimal charge speeds and it needs a lot more energy to heat up the pack before a quick charge session. So the required energy, the difference by preheating for this half an hour trip was approximately three or four kilowatts spent on preheating compared to not preheating. But that's not energy you will lose. I mean, you will gain that back because when you enter the charger, connect the charger on a cold battery pack, the heater still needs to start to work and it will need the same amount of energy approximately to get the battery pack to the same state as the preheated battery. So you will spend that energy anyway and you will end up spending more time uh, for nothing. So it's not cheaper not to use preheating. So there is no reason not to preheat. And make sure to buy cars that support preheating. That's very important. Not only preconditioning for optimal driving conditions. And if you have a Tesla, a Model Y for instance, make sure to use the preheat functionality. And if you navigate to a charger that's not registered as a charger, fast charger so you don't get any preheating functionality make sure to fakely navigate enter a supercharger as a destination in the right direction to make sure that the preconditioning activates uh, in, in, a, in a good time before arriving to the other charger so it would be really good if Tesla adds the function for manually activating the preheat functionality in your Tesla maybe that's uh, a upcoming functionality. I don't know, but that would have been great. I mean, this scenario will get even nastier if it's colder outside. Let's say minus 20 degrees and you don't drive your car for that long. You just enter the supercharger, plug it in and start charging. That will go really slow and you will end up spending a big amount of time a lot more than an hour for charging a battery pack. Then we're not talking 42 minutes, that will take a lot more. But I think you get the point. And I hope you enjoyed this video and that I was able to give you some useful information about preheating and not preheating the battery pack. So as I always say, thank you for watching, speak to you soon.